Okay, this video is gonna be called How to Conquer Aging or Die Trying and Protein Restriction and James R. Mitchell, PhD. It's really a couple things combined. Basically, Conquer Aging or Dying is a YouTube channel and I was asked to take a look at it. Um, James R. Mitchell is a protein researcher. He actually died only a couple years ago, but the guy was like a genius. Um, and protein restriction comes into play because both of these guys are interested in it and it's, it's highly relevant. Um, the Conquer Aging or Die Trying is kind of a fun YouTube channel to visit. The guy tests himself backwards and forwards and correlates all his lab results with his diet. And he keeps very meticulous records. He's been doing that for years. I think he's accumulating useful data. He does seem like he's a rather intelligent guy. A um, couple terms to know. Uh, CR is caloric restriction. DR is dietary restriction. APR, animal protein restriction, sulfur restriction, so anyways. All right, but what, what do I see as a problem with this guy? Um, he seems kind of young, like he's in his 40s, and he really hasn't figured out nutrition yet. You know, guys usually don't have their act together in nutrition until they're in their 50s. I think he's about 49, so maybe he'll figure things out pretty soon, but he's sort of all over the place. There's no coherent theory. He's not able to put it together. I mean, that's why I strongly recommend a person read Dr. McNugal. He gives you a coherent rationale uh, better than anybody else out there. Um, uh, I would actually think my videos are pretty good for giving you some of the biochemistry and molecular biology perspectives on nutrition. But, um, you know, until you have a coherent rationale, you might later just prove it and show that it's wrong. But until you have a coherent rationale, it's hard to make sense out of food. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you look at his diet. It doesn't make sense. He eats some cheese, some eggs, some yogurts, sardines. That's all crap, okay? And nuts, really high fat, avocado, really high fat. Then he supplements with whey protein. Who knows how much MSG, et cetera, is in that. He even rarely eats M&Ms, pizza, and tea. So his diet is kind of all over the place. It's There's no intelligent rationale behind his diet that one can clearly see. And he's always rattling off all these facts, but he doesn't connect the dots. He doesn't make sense out of things. He puts a big emphasis on biological age and showing how his biological age is much less than chronological age. I mean, I do think he's a bright guy, and I do think he maybe is headed towards some you know, big insights. That's great. But right now, he seems like he's sort of muddling around and trying to figure things out. Um, there's no con coherent synthesis of the data. He does seem to be moving towards eating less fat because he sees that when he lowers his fat, he improves his insulin sensitivity. Well, you know, we've known that since 1927 with the J. Shirley Sweeney studies, the Himmler studies, the Rabinowitz studies, um, etc. Kempner's work, Pritikin's work, McDougall's work, etc. But it's still nice the way he shows it, okay? He's also moving towards eating less and less protein. He's seen that caloric restriction, especially methionine restriction, increases longevity in mice. He's seen that it lowers his own uh, WBC, you know, a suggestion of perhaps less inflammation. Um, it lowers his uh, blood glucose level, you know. Um, it lowers his blood lipids, his blood creatinine as an indicator of renal function. Neutrophils are lowered as well. It's a type of white blood cell, maybe an indicator again of decreased inflammation. Um, so he doesn't seem to realize that, you know, when you really study nutrition a lot, you come to the conclusion animal foods are bad and they should be avoided. Um, he has a lot of videos on supplements and he's an academic guy is my impression. So when you're in academics, you're going to have to sort of kiss butt to, you know, pharmaceutical companies, nutrient uh, supplement companies probably. I mean, if he wants to get grant money, he's got a lot of time to do this. I wish I had this much time to, to do this sort of thing as this guy does. And he has to be getting money from somewhere to be able to pay for all these lab tests. So I don't know if he's sponsored. I don't know. I don't know what his situation is. But all I'm saying is somebody's giving him some research money in order to be able to check his lab so frequently. Um, and so when you're in a university academic setting trying to get money from somebody, you usually got to promote their product. So I would be careful about him becoming a, 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 a supplement promoter. But like I said, beneath all of this, there's still something good here. This guy is smart and he's obtaining a lot of data and something useful might come out of this in the future. And he's pretty entertaining. I mean, his videos are enjoyable to watch. Um, but uh, like I said, it's hard to put it all together and say good stuff about nutrition because there's no money in it for the most part. Some guys have figured out how to make money off it and my hat's off to them. I myself have not. I just do this as a hobby. Uh, but other things now. Okay, so that's conquer aging or die trying. So it's worth taking a look at with those caveats as above. 
Now, the other guy to know about with regard to protein restriction. So, Conquer Aging or Die Trying, his data is suggesting you want to lower your dietary protein for all these good reasons. Lower blood glucose, lipids, uh, renal function tests, creatinine, and neutrophils, possibly inflammation. But James R. Mitchell, PhD, it's good to know James R. Mitchell, PhD. He's got a really good, he's got a great YouTube lecture at Buhinger Wilhemi Clinic, okay, where he talks about his research on protein restriction. And he's also going to show protein restriction lowers blood lipids. T. Colin Campbell has said the same thing. It improves insulin sensitivity. Well, if you lower blood lipids, you're going to have better insulin sensitivity. Lowers insulin needs in a, uh, a type 1 diabetic, I think, as well as type 2. But anyways, better longevity is shown in mice, shown in fruit flies. And um, the protein restriction also appears to cause weightlifting. It's thought that it causes more burning of fat, perhaps because the liver decides to spare protein when it's in short supply. And it takes the glycerol from triglycerides burned in your body's uh, fat stores and it uses them for gluconeogenesis. You know, Meat has more leucine. Leucine activates mTOR. It's a branch chain amino acid. And that's one of the reasons why meat is thought to increase the rate of cell replication. And that might cause accelerated aging. Because when you increase the rate of cell replication, you reach the Hayflick limit sooner, which means the maximum number of cell divisions for somatic cells, non-germ cells, meaning that once they reach about 60, was the research of Hayflick. He was a microbiologist in the 1900s in the United States. Um, you, you, can't, you can't replicate that cell anymore. The cell goes into so-called senescence and it'll eventually die. It's because regular somatic body cells, the non-stem cells and whatnot, they don't have telomerase enzymes. So I think there's good reason to believe that protein restriction might um, increase longevity. And it seems to do so in these animal studies. And the big thing Mitchell is saying is that he thinks that increased longevity isn't just because of caloric restriction. He specifically says he thinks it's because of protein restriction. And he specifically says he thinks it's total protein restriction and not just animal protein. Now that's different than Nicola Campbell, who specifically just emphasized restricting um, animal protein, avoiding all animal protein. And basically, if you eat a starch-based diet, you satisfy your hunger with fewer calories. So you, you're pretty much likely to calorie, calorie restrict. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And it's going to raise a real important question here. All of this is coming together. Yes, you want a very low-fat diet. You want a low-protein diet, basically like the Kempner diet, basically what, like what I recommend, the Spartan vegan diet, like the McDougal diet. Um, the Okinawans, in their traditional diets, back when they used to be centenarians, were was about 85% carbohydrate, 6% uh, fat, and 9% protein. So um, Kempner's was 93% carbohydrate, 3% fat, 4% in calories from protein. So that, those are remarkably low percentages of fat at 3%, remarkably low percent from protein at 4%. Um, and, you know, my experience and study of nutrition says the same thing, very low fat, you know, definitely less than 10%, low protein, less than 10%, high carbohydrate diet is the best diet. But now there's a big remaining question. What about beans? You know, beans are typically 25 to 30% protein. There's tons of good nutrients and fiber in beans. They got the prolonged satiety effect, the after meal effect, second meal effect. The Blue Zone groups eat a lot of beans. Dan Butner, the famous National Geographic nutrition researcher, epidemiology guy, he thinks that that beans is one of the perhaps the most important staples of all these blue zone groups to keep them healthy. So where am I on this? Well, what I'm thinking is maybe the beans are a great thing, but should be limited to one cup a day. I don't know that for sure. That just seems to be where it's going. Eat some beans, but maybe not eat so much of them. You know, my mother-in-law makes me lots of beans. Maybe she wants to accelerate my aging. No, I'm just kidding. Thank God she cooks for me. Um, so I don't know about this. Should I maybe lower my beans? You know, what would be your best option for starches? I think rice, potatoes, and sweet potatoes are fantastic. They all have about 1% fat, and they'll, they'll keep you skinny, which will keep your blood pressure down and everything else. they got an incredibly wonderful, good track record. So that's kind of like what I'm getting out of this. Maybe still eat beans, but maybe eat a little bit less because I'll sometimes eat a lot of beans. Uh, so anyways, I uh, hope that's helpful.